Hey, hi. Hey, welcome to Toy Gangs. Today we're going to talk about one of Collector's Big Mystery. Collector's Big Mystery? What am I talking about? I'm talking about inbox collectors. There's a whole legion of people out there that are unlike me and you, and they don't just open up toys, pose them, put them on a shelf. Wow! They leave them in the box. And I used to think this was a big mystery, but I've been looking into it, and I kind of understand it now. Okay. So there's no need to kind of look down on these people or make fun of them, because they don't want to play with their toys. They want to appreciate them in the box. And I'm going to go into a few reasons as to why, how, and what is an inbox collector. Hey! Oh! Games! Woo! Oh! Games! Take this Han Solo, for example. It's on this beautiful retro card. So for me, although I'm not an inbox collector, some things I buy, I leave in box because I think the card tells the story of the figure. Um, Empire Strikes Back came out in the 80s. This card for this original three and three quarter toy was in the 80s. I can't afford or find that original toy in that 80s packaging. So to have this on that retro card, it all tells a little story. Um, that's just for this figure. Um, I have other examples. Examples. Um, like this figure, when I bought this from the Disney store, it was only six bucks, down from like $30. I don't have shelf space, nor do I have other figures in this line. This is kind of a weird one-off um, Hasbro and Disney did for these metal figures. I do have a few more. So I'm going to probably leave this thing in the box for this figure's entirety, or my lifespan which is hopefully another 50 years. Let's all cross our fingers for that one. Not the way you eat. Yes, not the way I've been on a run lately. So sometimes you become an inbox collector because you run out of room. Or I still have my... Sometimes people buy things twice. Back in the day when Spawn came out... Utah, give me two. Um, I would buy these, open them up, and then I saw them on sale for like three bucks. I bought another one to keep on card. You know, there's a there's a there's a feeling that these are investments, and they are. In, in a lot of cases, not every case. Like this, I found this for six dollars. The likelihood of this ever going really high in value are slim to none. But it's not just about the fear of having something to resell. There is something to be said about having a figure in the packaging that the company wanted you to see. All the marketing is there. All the artwork, artwork is there. It is, a, it is like a little work of art. It's a little time capsule too. In 20 years, um, you'll remember this figure of the era it was made in. Like, if I could find a... Oh, let me bring back that Spawn figure. This was called like the clamshell packaging, which isn't really used anymore. This was like a 90s thing, late 90s. This is a 2018 style uh, of toy. So there is a story to be told there as well. If I had a more of a retro figure, I do actually. Look at me. I'm all over the place. This is real early 90s. Um, let me bring this guy down. This is Toy Biz. Both Toy Biz. The packaging kind of tells the story with the figure. If I rip that Venom out of that box, it doesn't tell the story. Just an old toy. To find it in that 90s packaging really lets you know um, when it was made, what era, and it tells the complete story. This is cool because it has, uh, even if it doesn't show the figure, um, you see a little graphic of Batman on there. I, I really used to think that people are nuts that were inbox collectors, but as I start to, don't want follow me, as I start to collect, and I get a little older, I can see why there is this desire. Let me rip out a little neck of figure there. Here's one where you can't see the figure, but you have this nice, like, oh, you're like you're opening a book. You're opening a story into a figure. And there's something to be said for that. Um, it's not as weird as you think, although it is fun to rip open a figure, pose it, take pictures, and go nuts. There's something to be said about having 
and a little art piece that you can hang on your wall forever and you can still sort of get the same feeling as a uh, out of box collector just by staring at it and like maybe whispering to it like hey buddy I know you like you feel safe in there don't you yeah you do I'm going to tell you some of the advantages and disadvantages of being an inbox collector from what I could see. So this, for example, this Schwarzenegger NECA commando figure, when I got him at Toys R Us about eight years ago, I didn't really have the shelf space for him, and I kind of don't now, because I already had a Terminator um, figure, I had a Predator figure, I could only have so many figures of a, spe a specific character, say, on my shelves. So I kept him in box. Long story short, now this figure's worth like $200. Well. Wow. This was a $30 purchase. Um, I kept him in box. Price shot up. It's probably only going to continue to rise. And there is a risk there because if they do remake or re-release this Commando figure, it's going to go down. But those, you know, it's kind of like stocks. But that's a, one of the fun perks of being an inbox collector. Say there's something out there I really want. Uh, there's a $200 figure I really want. I don't have the money. Boom. You sell this figure. You can get that figure you really want. When I got this figure, I just kind of got him because he was a cool figure on the shelf. So there is a reward to keeping these figures in box. And that is a beauty. And you can still appreciate the figure when you open this clam shot, clamshell style. Is this clamshell? There's a uh, door book. What the heck is it called? Clam I should shot. know this. Clamshell is, uh, is the one where it's... um. It's the spawn one where it's still sealed. This is more of like a book cover. Um, you still can appreciate the figure. You just can't pose them and have uh, a lot of fun. But like I said, the fun is knowing this is worth 200 bucks. Close the book on that, baby. Another advantage to being an inbox collector. This Contra set, which is gorgeous, has never been remade uh, by NECA. They got Billy and Tommy or Billy and Jimmy. What were their names? I was Double Dragon. Billy... Yeah, Jimmy Lee and Billy, right? That's Double Dragon, though, you idiot. Well, I know. That's what I'm saying. I forget their names. Yeah, you would. Awesome game. Awesome figures. This is all neatly put in this display. Um, and I can hang it on the wall. And I have it. I do hang it on my wall near my video game section. It is a part of my little video game hallway. And if I were to rip these guys out of the box, now you have to have space for the figures and the box. Now, if you're lucky, you could display the box behind them, but let's say you have 20 figures and 20 beautiful boxes. You really, this box you're never gonna see again, just like you're never gonna see these figures again. So it's kind of a, a two-part deal. If I rip these figures out of the box and then throw this box away, that's kind of a piece of art in itself that is just gone forever. And I could see the guilt you would have for throwing away something so nice. Now, a lot of us, unless you have mansions or a garage just dedicated to your toy boxes, how are you gonna be able to uh, sustain that over time? We're all gonna keep collecting. No one just, rarely do, does a toy collector just buy one thing. Um, so there's a, there's a, there's a built-in system there as an inbox collector to be able to keep both the box and the figure forever. So I just talked about all the things I do get about inbox collecting, how the card's gonna be a work of art, the value can go up, uh, the, the ability just to hang it on your, on your wall, like an art piece, which it is. In my opinion, all these figures are works of art. Um, when you get a box like this, which is just really low effort packaging, which is fine because it's such a massive figure, it's nice that you have a big window. Is that spit that flew in my mouth? You have this big window, you can see the whole figure. Gabagool coming out of my mouth. There's nothing fancy about this box. There's nothing, nothing to it. It's not telling a story. It's not any good photographs. It's not good artwork. It's not even, well, there's a little right up on the back. I can't wait to tear this thing out of the box. I just, it has to come out of this box, man. Sometimes inbox collectors in my opinion, and I'm sorry guys, you go a little overboard. If the card isn't nice and there's no real, we don't, we can't tell the future. We don't know what the figure is going to be worth. I just don't think this Red Hulk in five years will be, we will be worth that much more than it is now. Whereas that Contra set and that Commando figure, where there's 
no commando figures and no contra figures. So obviously the value is going to stay high. There's not many in the world. Not many out, out there. There's going to be a ton of Red Hulks. So just rip it open. Have some fun. This guy needs to be out of here. Shit, that's that plastic crack it's called. He's fucking ties. Wait, wait right there. Don't you fucking move. Are you? I don't think so. I don't think so. Whoever twisted you up at the warehouse is an idiot. And they got the twisty tie and the plastic tie. He's. Ah, oh, he's out. There he is. There he is. He's, he's, he's free of that prison. Huh. I don't have any shelf space for this guy. Should have left them in the box. Damn it. As much as I, uh, like I said, I, under I, I get it. I get the appeal of inbox collecting, but a clear disadvantage. If all of these figures were on card still, I would be taking up probably 60 more percent of this room. You know, the card takes up 10 by 12 inches sometimes. These are in big boxes. Or you got deluxe figures in bigger boxes. It would be impossible to keep these box without looking like a, a hoarder. I could probably fill this wall up with a majority of them on card, and that would look cool, but I wouldn't be able to have all these. You have to limit yourself when you're an inbox collector because of the room. You might have to rent a storage unit. If you keep them in the basement, there's a chance of that flooding. If you have them in the attic, you're going to have dust and mold. There is def like I'm, There's pros and cons to all of this. And I'm trying to figure out, there's no better way to collect. There's no rights and wrongs. Um, but I could definitely see why I would just be stressed if all these were in box. I, I probably just wouldn't buy them. I, I, I really would just stop at some point. And I don't want to stop, baby. I am locked in. I'm here to go for the long haul. I'm buying a toy every goddamn pay period. Every time I get a bonus check. Every time I win a football bet. Every time I steal money from a friend. Jimmy, I'll pay you. Every chance I get, I pay my bills, pay my car insurance, my friggin' This rent. one's really going off the rails, huh? Off the rails. Uh, I'm in it, baby. I, I'm just, toys are my thing. Um, but if I was an inbox collector, where would all these go? I just don't know. I, I do have a closet with some more box stuff, but I don't know how you guys do it. That's all I want to say about that. I guess I went off on a tangent there. But I get it. I, you know, I'm... I'm um, with you guys, I used like I said, I, I see on Facebook, people will make fun of an inbox collector, and it's funny, and they'll say, when's the toy store opening up, and let that baby breathe, uh, show me your titty, wait, damn, I'm talking about it. oh yeah, toys, we're talking about toys, you get picked on, but I get it, the art works of art, I'm going to grab another on-card figure, you guys stay right there, so this was made in the 90s, Toy Biz, this was made in 2018, uh, Hasbro. They're both Marvel Legends. They're both Marvel characters. This was made in kind of honor of this, even though it's a different line. I'm going to keep these both on card. They are little works of art. This is a this is a painting, basically. This is a 3D painting, man. Um, I'm keeping that on card. This guy is an original toy. Why would I open it right now? It would make no sense. So, I get it. I'm with you guys. Um, they are works of art. Um, there's something to be said to having that restraint to keep a work of art in its pristine box, in its natural habitat, so to speak. And it's, uh, it's a different way to collect. It's, it's a more patient way of collecting. And uh, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with the inbox collecting. And uh, there's not much more to say about it. I don't, at the end of the day, I don't think there's a right way to collect or a wrong way to collect. I don't think anyone is right or wrong. I don't think, uh, like I said, there's pros and cons, like I talked about in the vid. And, uh, yeah. But damn, imagine if all these were cards. This is like 300 figures. Imagine if I had 300 of these. Speaking of cons, remember the thing you told me that you did to get 
that Spider-Man figure. That most yeah. people would view that as possibly. <laughs> I think that's good. It's funny. Sure. Got a funny guy, cameraman back there. I'm gonna uh, replace him and fire him. <laughs> yeah! uh, that was Toy Games today. Uh, this is March. We'll have another big video in April. Like, subscribe, sub subscribe. Yeah. What did I say? That's it. Subscribe. Subscribe. Like, subscribe, comment. You don't have to share or any of that nonsense, but I'm having fun doing these vids. I hope you are too. Till next time. Ha <laughs> ha.